Okay, we have 10 minutes left for, uh, for Boris Polpakov. Are you Boris? Okay, good. Who is scheduled for today? Uh, Boris is the founder of Code Synthesis, develops open source tools and libraries for C++, and he's going to give us 10 minutes about a C++ package manager. Why do we need one? Do we really need one? And what would it look like? Okay, while it's booting, who thinks that we need or that we don't need a package manager or is not sure that we need one? Wow, I don't even need to give this talk. <laughs> Wait, check to see if they're okay. Put your hand up your way. They said we didn't need a package manager. Or you're not sure. So you think you don't need it or you're not sure whether you need it or not for some definition of a package manager. Yeah, well, anyway, it's useless talk. <laughs> okay, who is using Visual Studio as their main IDE? Okay, quite a few people. Qt create, a few, this, maybe Xcode, okay, a few. Oh, what, what everyone else is using? Something else? Okay, you, you are this crowd, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, the Visual Studio guys will probably know what that this is. I find myself spending quite a bit of time lately in this dialogue. And I don't like it. Also, the Visual Studio guys or people who try to write libraries probably know what those options mean. They select the runtime in, in, in the Microsoft compiler. And if your library and application use different ones, then your code won't, won't link. So I wish this never existed. The question for the Qt creator guys, do you guys know where your GCC is installed? You do. You know that there, there could be several versions of GCC. And it might not even be GCC, it could be a Visual Studio. <laughs> okay. Anyone try to, to link a library to an iOS application in Xcode? Yeah. Was it fun? No. <laughs> <laughs> At least it was static. Yeah. Well, there's a dizzying array of configurations configuration options, it can be a simulator or a, or a real hardware, and it's a real hardware, it's the processor version, it's a soft plot, hard plot, well, you get the idea. And then to add insult to injury, Apple changes the way you do this with every release of Xcode. Okay, and anyone tried to write a library that, that is easy to use in all, this, in all three of these IDEs? Anyone? See, one, one hand. Okay. Anyone wrote a library that is easy to use in all of these IDEs? Well, let's say possible. <laughs> and and how, how many of you actually, how many of you wrote a library that was a header-only library, so it didn't have any source code in it? Okay, well, the, the point I'm trying to make is that it's so painful to actually link stuff to, to actually come to build and then link in all these different IDs is that people actually try to write a header-only library even when it's, it shouldn't really be a header-only library. Anyway, so let's, let's look at it from the user perspective how we might start using a new library in, a, in Visual Studio, right? So we download the library, we build the library, then we add the include and link paths in that dialog that we saw, then we link the library that we add a library to the linker input in our project file, then we build the application and realize we build the wrong library configuration. Okay, well, no big deal go back to the library and we try to build the right configuration, right? And realize there is no configuration that we need. 
No, maybe we need 32 or 64 bit then, or static library and the library only has 32 bit and dynamic libraries, or uses a wrong runtime. Okay, so we go back to the library and we try to create the necessary configuration by cloning one of the existing ones, and then the library doesn't build for some reason, and we give up. <laughs> I think that's a pretty standard procedure. So how would it look like if we use the package manager? So we link the library and we build the application. That's it. Let's look what, what, what happens underneath, right? Visual Studio asks the package manager for the library. And it provides the exact build configuration. Which compiler is using is a 32, 64-bit ARM, debug release, runtime, the exact information. So the package manager then downloads the library if it, wasn't, if it hasn't been already downloaded. And then it builds the library if, if it hasn't been already built for this exact configuration. And then it returns the library to Visual Studio, which just links it to the application. And everything works fine. Now, I think this is much easier from the, um, you, from the user of a library. But let's see what happens here at this step from the library writer perspective. So the user writes you a nasty email saying that you know, your library sucks and you should go learn some C++, maybe attend some more C++ conferences. And then you start pulling the teeth, right? You, which platform you are using? You know, what's, what's the configuration? Oh, you forgot to tell me what the error message was. It's not fun. What happens if, if the package manager, when the package manager tries to build the library and it fails for some reason? Well, the package manager can actually automatically email you all the information down to the exact compiler options that it, that it tried to build the library with. So you actually don't even need to, the user doesn't even need to write you an email and you don't need to pull the teeth afterwards for you know, a week to find out exactly what happened. So I hope I convinced you that we need a package manager for C++. Oh, I have a question. I have a question. So in Visual Studio, there is Nougat package manager that which solves some of your problems. Mm -hmm. uh, how, what is it lacking that from what you're expecting? Uh, like, it makes it really easy for the end user. Uh, like, recently I've just do a few clicks with a couple of open CPU managing, be able to compile a simple console application with it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's workable for other environments, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so my it solves both of the problems and it solves only a little. Mm. Well, uh, so the question was, what about the NuGet package manager, which is, um, and what, what, what does it solve, and what doesn't it solve? Um, I looked at it, and I stopped when I realized that it's proprietary and closed source. So it only works on Microsoft, and you know, it's integrated with, with Visual Studio, and I kind of, I'm not interested any further. So that, that's my answer. Okay. Uh, the NuGet uh, package manager for C++, uh, currently the packages are installed on a per solution basis, which means that it, it does a lot of duplication, especially if your library is like hundreds of megabytes big, uh, it'll use up a whole bunch of disk space. And that's one of the, uh, well, I, just, I feel like I'm just gonna say it, it's one of the limitations I'm trying to address right now to make it usable for C++ libraries by making deduplication uh, in NuGet, uh, but it's, it's not coming very soon. So, you know, just for now, that is one limitation. Okay. That's it. 